Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as as the Bard of Philbar. Welcome to session Fartook-14. Previously on the Bard's podcast, our heroes sent the orphans back to their hovel and then encountered a pair of skilled brigands. While the group had difficulty with the pair, they were able to overcome early setbacks and have now captured the brothers. We rejoin them as they decide the men's fate. He better not be dead! shouted an angry Dorwin as he looked at his older brother Aoki as he was being bound by Fargus the Ranger. His retort caused an angry Cabe Silvertongue to punch him in the mouth, causing the bound man to spit blood. Shut up! yelled the half-elf, and he shook his aching fist. Fargus finished securing the older brigand and binding his wounds, pointed out that the unconscious man would live another day. The Delvers huddled up, each examining the other's injuries. Still shaking the cobwebs from her head, Sister Elaine asked if anyone needed healing in the form of the last half of the potion. Each felt that their wounds were not serious enough to warrant the use of the elixir, and then they moved on to discussing their next course of action. Welby piped up and pointed out that the room should be searched. Pointing out that their injuries deserve some kind of compensation, the others agreed and Sister Elaine stood watch over the pair of bound bandits while the others went through their meager possessions. A great deal of refuse covered the chamber and searching was not easy. Sister Elaine, rubbing her temples, stuck out her tongue at Dorwin as he glared at the cleric, but stopped when Lady Irena reported finding something. Holding up a piece of parchment, she put it up to the light. The group huddled around the document and discovered that it was a reward poster. Three men were scrawled onto the notice, and two looked a great deal like Ioki and Darwin. A third was named Lothar Metal and appeared to be the ringleader. Says here, quipped the mage, that you boys are worth fifty gold crowns each, while your ugly friend Lothar will garner a hundred gold pieces. Welby let out a low whistle, and the group moved over to the groggy Ioki and Darwin. Where's your friend? questioned the ranger, but Dorwin shrugged his shoulders. The human male exhaled deeply and repeated the question, but received only a bloody grin as a response. The Delvers questioned what they would do with the men as Dorwin began to laugh. As the group looked at him, he began to explain, What are you going to do with us? If you value your lives, you'll cut us loose and run like children, the bandit said in a salty tone. You have no idea what you're up against, and if you think we're just going to forgive you, ha, think again. As the group stared at him, he yelled out, Lothar! as loud as he could before a head punch from Fargus knocked him out. The group gagged both men and continued their examination of the room. A small footlocker yielded a few chunks of agate that could be sold or traded in the city above. Lady Irena, pointed out that Lothar is probably nearby, otherwise the bandit wouldn't have yelled. Cave quickly moved to the exit tunnel and kept watch in the event that trouble headed their way. He nodded to Fargus, indicated that nothing was coming this way. As the party discussed their options, the bard gave out a low whistle and pointed to the floor of the tunnel. The group looked, but didn't understand. Cave rolled his eyes, then said, Dog tracks. After double-checking the bonds on the two brothers, the group moved over to Cabe and confirmed canine tracks scattered along the ridge line of the sewer tunnel. A new torch was obtained from the brigand room, and the group dove into the winding tunnels. Fortunately for them, the dog had zigzagged through the trench, and the paw prints were fairly consistently spotted. After moving through several empty chambers, the group came upon a dark room with multiple boxes stacked in the area. The tracks led to the far corner and out into another tunnel. With curiosity getting the best of him, 
Wilby stopped to peruse several of the boxes and their contents. While the group waited impatiently on the far side, they watched as the gleeful halfling found item after item that he found interesting. After several minutes of waiting and yelling for Welby to continue, the group moved over to drag him away when they too began to look through the items. Lady Irena stood watch by the exit tunnel and became exasperated as the group continued to be distracted by the items present. Look, I'm telling you guys for the last time, she stated, but stopped abruptly as the pommel of the blade crushed into the back of her skull, causing her to go limp. The group heard the body fall and observed a very large man in scale armor hovering over her. What do you think you're doing with my stuff? demanded the man as blood began to pool under the mage. The delvers paled as they watched their friend die on the cobblestone floor. Dropping the baubles, they advanced on the large man that was easily identified as Lothar Metal from the wanted poster that they had discovered. The three males formed a front to attack the man on all sides and hoped to give Sister Elaine enough room to render aid to Irena before her life ended. Ooh, scary adventurers. You have me quaking in my boots. How about you hand over all your stuff and you, so you don't end up like little Miss Pointy Ears here. Ioki! Darwin! But no answer came. What have you done with me, boys? demanded Lothar. Fargus, with blade drawn, advised the leader that he need not worry, that he would be joining them soon enough. Lothar sneered and motioned for Fargus to come at him, but reached into his belt pouch. As the bandit leader tossed a ball at Cabe, it began to expand into a net which covered the wiry half-elf and trapped him in its sinewy strands. Sister Elaine dove to her fallen comrade, but Lothar's blade was too quick and sliced through the cleric's robe and leg, causing her to scream out in pain and grab the bloody stump. Wobi O'Toole saw his opening and took it by stabbing the large man in the leg. As he attempted to stab again, Lothar did an elbow drop and knocked the rogue out immediately, crumpling him to the ground. As Sister Elaine howled in pain, Cabe Silvertongue tore unsuccessfully at his silky prison and the other two lay unconscious. Lothar and Fargus circled each other, both seeking out a weakness in the other as the torch lay in the ground between them. Maybe you and I should work together, stated the bandit. If you have taken out my associates, I will need more assistance. You certainly look strong enough, said Lothar, as he swatted away a blade swing by Fargus. No thanks, asshole. My friends and I are going to take you and your boys in. You're worth quite a lot to us, said Fargus as he parried away a sweeping sword stroke. Lothar lunged again, but the ranger was too quick. Spinning, he slammed his elbow into the eye of the bandit, and the wound began to swell immediately. Backing up from the stinging blow, Lothar spit on the ground and smiled. <laughs> good one, he replied, but not good enough. The leader did a spin himself and slashed his feet up, catching Fargus in the left arm and right leg. The wound was rather serious and blood flowed freely. Making it worse, Fargus had dropped his weapon. Diving to retrieve it by the torch, Fargus gripped his blade and slashed at Lothar, nicking him in the process. Unfortunately, the large man slammed his foot down on the blade, compressing it and the ranger's hand to the floor. So close, young one. You almost lived to beat me. It is not to be today. The bandit raised his blade to bury it into Fargus's skull. Fargus closed his eyes to miss his own death and heard the breaking of glass and a fanfare of flame and felt heat as Lothar began to scream in agony. Fargus opened his eyes to see the bandit leader engulfed in flames, crashing into boxes and igniting the room. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures of Philbar, thanks for listening.